Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Tri Rods for August of 2023. And uh, we've got four speakers today. Our first uh, is going to be, first of our four interns this summer is Nishant uh, Dash, and he's going to talk about updating uh, zone report for IRODs and other server fixes because he was so fast. Take it away, Nishant. Hello, everyone. As Terrell said, my name is Nishan Dash, and uh, this summer I worked with the IRODS team to update the zone report and make some other server fixes. So a little bit about me. I'm from New York, and I'm a second year student studying computer science at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And I also do Taekwondo, and I like to travel. Uh, those are some of my hobbies. So here's a few quick stats uh, from my internship. I worked on 16 issues and made uh, 20, it's actually about to be 21 commits across five different repositories. And that consisted of about 1800 additions and 500 deletions of mostly C++ and Python code. So moving on to what I actually did, uh, I was brought on to update the zone report and so firstly, what is the zone report? Well, the zone, uh, I zone report is an I command, and that can be used by administrators to collect information uh, from all servers in a zone about the IROD's configuration. And the zone report is printed, uh, printed in a JSON format and can be checked against the zone bundle schema in the IROD's repo using a JSON schema validator. So one of the very first things I did was flattening the zone report. Um, in the past, there was a single provider assumption, meaning that only one uh, server in a zone could access the catalog. And that server was known as the ICAT server. Now, coordinating resources such as the pass-through resources or random resources were also listed under that ICAT server, as we can see in the picture. Um, the single provider assumption is no longer valid, and you can have multiple providers in a single zone. So I moved what used to be the ICAT server into the list of servers. And I also moved the coordinating resources out of a specific server, uh, because unlike the storage resources, uh, which are attached to a specific server, coordinating, uh, coordinating resources are uh, really part of the zone as a whole. Now, if you still want to find a provider, uh, you have to look through the servers list at each server config for the catalog service role being set to provider. And finally, I updated the JSON schema to match some of the changes I made uh, and fixed a few inconsistencies that existed. Uh, this means that an administrator can validate a zone report against the schema and be able to quickly see if the zone was misconfigured. So in addition to that, I exposed the info and comment fields for resources. So they already existed, uh, but they weren't printed to the zone report, meaning that you can change and modify the comment and info fields, but you weren't able to see it uh, when you called I zone report. Now each resource also prints the comment and info field, so in the image, we can see that the resource information, uh, we can see all the resource information and in red, we can see the comment and info fields have been added. And finally, I added checksums to the plugin information. Uh, so before the checksum field was left empty and after my changes, uh, it's populated with the checksum of the plugin. Uh, the checksum is calculated for the whole plugin library file. So if anything changes, uh, you would see a visibly different checksum. Um, there are a few more things that needed to be done or still need to be done for the zone report. So you may notice in the image that the version has been left empty. Uh, the version for plugins specifically. Uh, currently, we don't have a way of getting the version of a plugin. So uh, that's something that needs to be considered, and there's an open issue already for that. So those were the few things I did for the zone report. And after I finished those issues, I was about halfway through the internship. So I started to look at other issues in the core server. 
And I worked on some, a couple of ticket issues. So firstly, I added support for relative paths for iTicket. So this allows you to execute commands such as the one below. Um, in the past, if you wanted to create a ticket for a collection or data object, uh, you would need to provide a absolute path, but now you can use relative paths. I also fixed a bug where the modification time for tickets was not updated. Uh, that bug was found by Ganning, uh, the one of our other interns. Um, now, whenever you modify the ticket, the modification timestamp changes. So in addition to those ticket changes, I made some other miscellaneous changes. So firstly, I made some general refactoring to the Python testing scripts. I standardized some function headers and a few other things like that. I also added bound checks for getting environment variables uh, by removing some old C functions and replacing them with new ones that actually did check for the size of springs. I removed code that printed errors to the standard error in the client login functions, and instead passed those errors through the error stack to the client. So this issue took me quite a while uh, because after some digging through the code, I found out that the error stack was not only or was only allocated during an API call, and the client login functions happened before any API calls. Uh, this meant that I had to allocate the memory myself. And once I was able to do that, uh, I was able to use the error stack to print, uh, pass errors through, through to the client. And finally, I updated the default file object size to use signed integers instead of unsigned integers so that we can use negative one uh, to represent an object of unknown size rather than zero, which is a valid size for a data object. So overall, I learned a lot during this internship. Um, some of the technologies I learned uh, include iRods itself, Docker, some more Git, and more about GitHub. I also switched uh, to Linux from Windows pretty much full time because I wanted to be able to develop in a native environment rather than use the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL. Um, it's kind of strange developing uh, complex things on WSL. So I switched to Ubuntu Linux. I also switched from VS Code to NeoVim because VS Code was using a lot of system resources for such a large project like iRods. And it started to slow down my computer so there were times when I would have a few files open and that would be taking up almost 100% of my RAM, uh, making my computer almost unusable. And some of the lessons I learned include how to work as a team. Uh, before this internship, I rarely wrote code in a group. Uh, I was mostly writing on my own. So it was interesting to learn how to code as part of a larger team. I also learned to ask a lot of questions. Um, this was especially necessary in the beginning uh, when I was first looking through the code base. Um, there were times when I had just, if I had just asked a question, I would have saved myself a lot of time. So for instance, uh, when I was trying to calculate the checksums for plugins, I started by looking at the OpenSSL documentation uh, for what functions I had available there. However, I didn't realize that IRODs already had functions for calculating checksums, and I would have known that earlier had I just asked. Another silly example, uh, for a while I didn't know where the logs were stored, and for some reason I wasn't able to print to standard out. So I was passing all my debug messages through the zone report itself for a while um, until I asked Corey about where the logs were stored. Uh, finally, I learned to uh, talk through the problems I encounter. So one of the problems I was having was trying to allocate some memory in a function. And the problem was that I wasn't seeing the memory allocated after the function exited. Uh, when I talked through the problem and went line by line, I realized that I was allocating memory to a local variable and not to the actual location I wanted to allocate to. So when I joined, I expected getting started would be a challenge. It was a very big code base and it looked very intimidating. 
And while it still was challenging, I found that knowing uh, the different tools I had uh, helped me start making modifications to the code base very quickly. So knowing how to use my editor, uh, which in the beginning was VS Code, and knowing how to use the C++ language server protocol, or LSB, allowed me to jump around the code quickly, familiarize myself uh, with what was happening and what was being done so that I can start getting, or so I could get started immediately. I also found that some issues uh, took much longer than I expected. So, for example, I thought that fixing the modification time for tickets would be easy. And there was even a comment from Terrell confirming my expectation, but I ended up having to dive into the database code and added almost 800 lines of code for that one issue alone. So that was all I did. Thank you for listening. Um, working with the whole IROTS team was a pleasure, and I wanted to give a special thanks to Corey and Terrell, who helped me, uh, who helped me out a lot. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than willing to answer them. And if you would want to contact me, you can do, th uh, do so through my website. Thank you. Great. Um, I did not know my face was going to be on your presentation. That was news to me. So good job. Uh, do we have a question for Nishant? Yes, we have one in the room here. Would you use VS Code again on another project? Um, I mean, I still like VS Code. Uh, but I've sort of gotten used to NeoVim, and um, I feel I'm a little bit faster with it. I'm still sort of getting used to using Vim, though. Um, but VS Code is still something I would be willing to use if I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question. Yes. Um, what did you find to be the most enjoyable part of this um, internship? I mean, I think it was uh, uh, whenever I'd get things merged, uh, that was always the best. I think uh, the very first uh, like merge to main I had um, after doing all the zone report code, that was uh, that was pretty great. It felt really good um, having written something and then having it uh, added to something that everyone or a lot of people are using. Yeah. Great. I did have one other question, yeah. and that was, um, um, have your thoughts about software development changed in any way at, like, you know, following this internship? Like, any assumptions you made about software development, has that changed, or? Um, I mean, I think that uh, I have a bigger appreciation for all the things that I've been using. Uh, it's, it's pretty tough and, you know, finding these small bugs, uh, even things, very small things that uh, can take a while. So I have a bigger appreciation for all the software I use and, um, and now I'll be able to see, like, when I see a small thing, I'll know that, uh, there was still a lot of work put into it. Very good. Thank you so much. It Thank was you. Great having you. It was a good job and great presentation. Thank you.